uh, good point of uh, treatment because it has to be always treated from minimum two or three angles. And uh, the system of uh, uh, protocols with uh, peptides is also based on uh, addressing minimum two or three um, uh, systems to achieve uh, restoration of um, the health or homeostasis. That's why, uh, as you will see uh, later on, uh, in my lecture that uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, despite its very weak uh, diagnosis, uh, but uh, as we may see from uh, the history, that uh, it has been uh, officially recognized uh, in 1991, so-called Oxford criteria for chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, Michael Sharp based at the University of Oxford. And the condition that um, has to be uh, considered as uh, uh, appropriate diagnosis, that there must be a continuation of severe uh, weakness or fatigue for six months in duration. And it must be uh, affecting both physical and mental functioning. And from the six months, it must be minimum three times. Then it has been um, later on in 1994 uh, uh, renamed as a myalgic encephalomyelitis or systemic exertion intolerance disease. So I think uh, the most uh, appropriate is the chronic fatigue syndrome because you can imagine what is that and uh, Myalgic encephalomyelitis is already um, a little bit more uh, specific. So, um, for the moment, we have recognition from uh, the ICD-10. So, the code um, code of diagnosis is. Um, are for 53.82 that's the and the chronic definition sorry for the slide it must be uh, reversed uh, chronic fatigue syndrome um, is uh, mainly uh, the diagnosis which lasts uh, six months and it does not improve with the rest so if the person is uh, uh, minimum uh, three months co claiming the com problems with uh, concentration, with uh, physical performance, with uh, emotional uh, performance. People are demotivated, uh, depressed. So that's uh, one of the uh, conclusions that you may do. This is a chronic fatigue syndrome, but uh, the differential diagnosis is uh, very important, uh, but you can, um, on the basis of the following the patient, uh, change several protocols, which I will show you. Yes, Vasilos, I have started. So, uh, basically, um, uh, th this condition you will find quite frequently in various uh, uh, variations. So to find a pure, uh, pure fatigue syndrome is uh, um, quite rare because there is always uh, adherent uh, diagnosis, uh, which is metabolic, which is uh, um, cardiovascular, uh, neurological, or uh, gastrointestinal. But as a result, uh, it has this definition, of course. Um, this is a typical psycho neuroimmunology diagnosis. That's what we discussed before. And it's uh, frequently linked with the, the uh, stress. And uh, we will go through various types of stress conditions, which you may have uh, um, seen on the on the patient. So, as we have 
as we discussed, fibromyalgia, it means that uh, the patient is complaining of overall body pain, which can be, uh, which has to be differentiated very well from uh, osteoarthritis, um, rheumatoid arthritis, and um, acute uh, uh, post-traumatic arthritis. So that's uh, the muscles and the joints. What is more <clears throat> um, significant is anxiety. So you have a panic attacks and uh, uh, avoidant behavior. Then the irritable bowel syndrome, which is very frequently um, seen on uh, 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 on the patients that we uh, we have been treated, chronic um, uh, prolonged fatigue states, which means that a minimum pain is causing a uh, lots of recovery. Hmm? Mm. is complaining only slides. So I was complaining before, but unfortunately. Mm, if everyone else is hearing me, it's not my sound setting. Because I was controlling just before we start that um, uh, everyone from Italy can hear me. So I hope for the moment you have to check something in your computer. So coming back to the issue uh, and depression. But to do the differential diagnosis between depression and anxiety, uh, you need to do lots of lab work because uh, from uh, the panic attack, which is mixed uh, with uh, depression or depression, which is mixed with panic attacks and uh, loss of pleasure, loss of libido uh, can be many. Mm, uh, and in men, it's for instance, you know, uh, the, the man's menopause, which is around uh, 50, 60, so they have decrease of libido. And you must have, um, of course, on the other side, there are men who have an increase of libido, but it's not a fatigue syndrome. So when you have a decrease of libido, you must do the differentiation between the uh, hormonal uh, loss or more complicated issue, which is linked between the uh, intestine, cardiovascular, and the brain. So... Uh, this brings uh, enormous potential for variation of protocols uh, that uh, you would address with, uh, with the peptides. So let's say that these are the uh, three main uh, products. And uh, because my fatigue syndrome is, is very frequently combined with... Uh, Mm, the infection. An infection of um, like borreliosis, we will go through that later, but uh, lots of neuro infections which are currently um, on the market address uh, uh, address uh, the mm, treatment of uh, inflammation based on the infections uh, which you acquire. Now, so so that, that's uh, that's the protection. Second is nerves. You always go to the nerves because the patient has to be a little bit calm because there is from the inflammation and from the symptoms, patients are uh, highly agitated and highly uh, over uh, overplaying the the symptoms. So we must calm them with um, the nerves. And the third, which would be done, is uh, is muscle uh, plus because uh, muscle is increasing synthesis of uh, um, proteins. So you have to switch the patient from uh, catabolic status when he is losing weight, losing uh, muscles, losing joints, and uh, cartilage is laxity of the joints, and um, you have to uh, reinforce this. So uh, the question is, if you do the uh, treatment with protection as for the infections before or simultaneously with the nerves or muscle. 
but uh, usually we do very intensive two weeks with protection and then going to nerves and muscle. Of course, if you find irritable bowel disease, you have to add uh, something for the intestine, which is flatu or microflora. Uh, for um, the, the causes, so if we go to the main causes, from the somatic point of view, of course, you must examine. Uh, you must examine the um, uh, immune immune system uh, thoroughly, and uh, we will discuss later on the the uh, lab results, which you should do, and hormones and hormonal imbalances. That's what I said. So, if the woman is in menopause or a man is in the menopause, uh, you have to be very uh, uh, focusing on balancing the hormonal and uh, immune system uh, problems. Uh, of course, examination of immunity, I don't know to what extent you can do it, because uh, from my point of view, you must do all the cytokines and, and uh, um, sequences of uh, T lymphocytes phenotypes. That's very important uh, to do. And uh, But again, as the first aid, you start with uh, adrenal and epiphysis. So after going uh, from protection and uh, calming down the patient, the additional, according to the state of agitation or according to the states of uh, uh, irritability, um, you put adrenal to calm down and restore hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. That's what uh, we have been discussing uh, last time that this is the cause of most of autoimmune diseases and uh, we can consider uh, chronic fatigue disease as a combination of uh, a combination of most of uh, autoimmune uh, small diseases so, so a little bit of joints a little bit of irritable uh, bowel disease and a little bit of uh, skin irritation and uh, a little bit of uh, neurological. So all this complex goes for the uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. And uh, of course, it has a huge and enormous psychological uh, consequence for the patient. But we should not be on the basis of uh, the current um, psychiatric. So please be always very thorough that the first is the peptides because once you touch the patient with antidepressant, there is uh, very difficult to address it then with the peptides because the drastic molecules of antidepressants occupy the receptors which should be, uh, which should be uh, used by peptides. You know, so for this moment, I would suggest that uh, you uh, what what is uh, on the um, what is um, uh, in the clinical uh, examination. Uh, so, can you read the immune system problems and hormonal imbalances? That's the key, you know, and the, you can see the boxes. So uh, for the, uh, I will read it for you. So the immune system um, is impaired uh, for the fatigue syndrome and appear to be um, uh, uh, slightly impaired, but Currently, it's unclear which impairment. It's not important, the white text, you know. It's the immune system that you have to focus on, the immune system. And uh, the hormonal imbalances, people who have chronic fatigue syndrome have also uh, abnormal blood levels of hormones produced in hypothalamus, pituitary glands, or adrenal. That's why we must always uh, address these two uh, 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 systems, which is epiphysis and uh, uh, adrenal glands. Now, risk factors. Uh, the most important part of the risk factors from uh, detox uh, 
one of the major risk factors is the age. So statistically, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome you see mostly in uh, in the uh, age of 40 to 50 and uh, more women, you know. Uh, but uh, one of the questions is that uh, usually women uh, have more complaints. Uh, in the case that it, it's uh, more the woman, so then you have uh, another product which is Woman Plus. And <clears throat> I didn't put it here because uh, for the man it should be a um, active man, for the woman it would be man. depends on the sex and you have to see what is more appropriate for which uh, uh, which uh, diagnosis. And of course uh, there is a big issue with the stress because um, what we discussed in the last webinar, uh, the stress is key f for the uh, uh, onset of uh, dysregulation. Now you have to examine whether it's out stress or distress and whether it's the inner stress or outer. So inner stress you go more for the for the uh, neurological uh, consequences and if it's outer it's more uh, psychosomatic psychological which is uh, family work uh, the irrational fears like now uh, The question here, does it mean that you prescribe these products as a protective therapy? Yes, in the case of, uh, of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, yes, because I found it currently the most efficient, much more efficient than any other, uh, uh, like I said, antidepressants or um, uh, anxiolytics or painkillers. Because uh, these combinations which I'm telling you, have always a uh, long-term effect. And uh, what we have noticed in the hundreds of patients that we have been treated with this diagnosis is that uh, it usually helps uh, in the 90% cases. And it helps uh, by, by half, it helps by 90%, it helps by 100%, but it always helps. And it does not accumulate um, side effects. That's the most important. <clears throat> yes, I mean, I, I am uh, these two detox and muscle. I am prescribing for uh, the, the uh, onset of the of the disease because uh, usually lots of uh, people have uh, no any detoxification prior they come to you. I don't know how in Greece or how in in. Uh, um, in England, but uh, for the moment, what I have seen that uh, usually people in industrial uh, cities do not do too much of the detox and do not care so much of the hydration and do not care so much of the proper sleep and so on that we will go through. Uh, next slides. So uh, this is uh, the um, sleep disorders. That's very important to examine how the people sleep because lots of the fatigue syndrome is merely based on lack of sleep. Uh, and if you can do uh, the question, anybody who complains being under stress or just in presence of the symptoms? Uh, well, usually um, anybody who complains under stress, if the person feels that uh, cannot hold uh, the situation without the uh, consequences. So as a preventative, it's ideal that the fatigue syndrome will never develop or any other disease like high blood pressure, blood sugar and whatever of the uh, civilization diseases. So this we uh, prescribe as a, a prevention. Also, that's what I'm mentioning here, that uh, you have to go through uh, classic medical problems, which is uh, uh, li linked to conditions like anemia, diabetes, uh, thyroid, you know, that's very, or parathyroid. Then, uh, of course, it's uh, the whole cardiovascular system, lungs, uh, and uh, 
uh, you can uh, with a high blood pressure or weak heart can make you lots of fatigue that's why uh, you even for this condition uh, we have the protocols that we can start with but uh, it's a question if you work in the hospital uh, if you can afford it to prescribe non-standardized treatment but as a recommendation uh, it always even what we have seen even if the patient takes a chemical drugs it highly potentiates the chemical drugs so it's it's uh, thoroughly recommended now for the uh, and of course, the last one, in, not the least, is the mental health issues. You know, because uh, you have to follow the bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depression, uh, anxiety. That's what we discussed uh, at the beginning of the seminar. That we have to very thoroughly see where is the cause. So this is like a basic guideline where where to uh, go for the the cause, but. Uh, the good question that if somebody is under stress or you have a symptom of uh, of uh, cardiovascular or you have a symptom of neurological, uh, you can do uh, preventatively uh, the, one of the protocols of the peptides, which I'm suggesting, because it always works very well and uh, we have a very good feedback you know some some protocols more some less but for instance combination of muscle and joint uh, for the elderly people as a prevention is uh, uh, very favorable as well as uh, the vision you know which is for the eyes and uh, the vessel for the microcirculation now this is important, you know, that you understand. We, we discussed the psychological stress. Now we will discuss the um, oxidative stress. This is extremely important that uh, nobody is taking care of much of the metabolic pathways for the stress. So let's say we may have understand that there is a psychological stress of the, uh, of the situation that the person is in, but we can hardly or I didn't uh, see many patients, uh, many colleagues, except Italy, those who work with uh, epigenetic, epigenetica, not rhaceutica, uh, that uh, Giorgio Terziani, that uh, they have been very cautious about uh, oxidative stress. Now, the problem of oxidative stress is um, mm, that it increases autoimmune responses. So, you start to have metabolically autoimmune response and the nitrogen, excessive nitrogen, which is remaining, is dissolving to oxygen. Now the, the empty oxygen has to somehow be uh, involved. And as you can see, um, if you have enough antioxidant enzymes, you go for the neuroprotection or for the neurodegeneration. So it starts to be a vicious circle that you have first uh, oxidative stress and then you have uh, emotional stress. So the more oxidative stress is going up, the more is your emotional. So you go to the vicious circle. So even if you go to psychologist and you don't work with uh, the body, I mean, with uh, the, some medication or improving the metabolism, it helps very little. Of course, part of this is always a rehabilitation. So um the, the stress has to be solved out in complexity of nutrition, supplementation, psychology, and exercise. Now, for the, the my recommendation for the oxidative stress is uh, the nerves, uh, brain, and detox. Detox is a very good product, you know, that... Uh, decreases the free radicals uh, and um, it has similar uh, products uh, a similar effect like the products of uh, cell food but it's on the uh, basic on a completely different uh, principle but uh, the brain and the nerves gives the resistance of this oxidative free radicals on the nerves as i'll show you in the picture before and then, then you do the detox and you, uh, the patient has a lots of relief. So that's uh, quite important if you have uh, somebody of uh, this kind of 
a problem to address it uh, this way. Uh, yeah, this is the, the, what I have explained before, that the unpaired electron um, anti-bonding orbital is uh, meaning that the nitric oxide is a free radical. Yeah, and, and then oxidative stress is, is uh, raising. So this, I put a very much importance, not so that you understand the mechanism, but that you understand that the patient who is having a chronic disease is always in oxidative stress, always. So oxidative stress, makes you feel bad. If you feel bad, you are in a bad mood and the bad mood is giving you the psychological stress and anxiety and depression. So this was my uh, concern to increase the importance of, uh, of this. Now, <clears throat> this shows also, uh, maybe you know about, you still remember about the Krebs cycle. So uh, the oxidative stress is causing a serious consequences in uh, appropriate performance of Krebs cycle because the lowering uh, l malite and isocitrate is causing uh, less adenosine triphosphate synthesis, less energy. So uh, then it explains absolutely uh, on the basis of uh, metabolic pathways uh, why the person is uh, so weak and uh, without any energy. Uh, now, the next part should be the uh, the blood brain barrier and damage of intestinal permeability. Uh, so we discussed it shortly in my last uh, webinar. So I want to come back to this in the chronic fatigue syndrome. It's uh, very important that uh, uh, you have the full intestinal uh, uh, permeability treated. Uh, lots of people who are dehydrated, who uh, eat a lots of uh, processed food, um, have serious uh, gut leak syndrome or uh, um, uh, gut permeability. The problem is that um, the circulating antibodies react with uh, the neurological tissues and infiltrate the brain. And once they infiltrate the brain, they start to... Uh, destroy the neurons. This is one of the, um, uh, what they call a telomere shattering. Uh, so they shorten the telomeres of the neurons. So it's accelerating of aging. So even if you don't, we don't speak just about the chronic fatigue syndrome, this is a typical combination, which I will show you for uh, anti-aging of men. Of course, this uh, excludes that the patient will take statins. As maybe you have read that statins are, uh, the anti-cholesterol drugs are the worst for Alzheimer and, uh, and Parkinson disease because they destroy the, uh, through the toxins that penetrate through the blood brain barrier, uh, have um, very substantial um, uh, destruction of, uh, of the neurons. So, uh, as a first aid, you know, you always put the, the brain and the microflora. So, this would be for anyone that, uh, and I don't know in well, how you can examine the, the uh, to what extent you can examine the blood, the, the intestinal uh, uh, penetration or intestinal leak. Uh, there are several uh, several uh, types of examination. One of them is that you drink certain uh, liquid and then you pee. And if you pee 100% of the liquid, then it's all uh, uh, going through without uh, retention. If you pee less of this uh, of this uh, product, then um, that there is a retention in the body, and, and you may judge. How, uh, but you can you may have a look at the internet to uh, how to examine that and in the chronic fatigue syndrome it's one of the most important examinations it's quite simple uh, it takes 24 hours uh, but uh, it's very efficient and for the prognosis of the treatment and success of the improvement of the patient it's uh, it's quite uh, uh, quite essential now, this is what I have been speaking about, uh, what should be 
uh, examined. I hope you can see it well because it's uh, the white letters on the black background. Uh, so here you have most of the uh, uh, cytokines which are elevated and show what is the level of uh, uh, objective uh, complaints of the patient because um, uh, with the chronic fatigue syndrome it's very difficult you know to see where starts the body and ends the head or where starts the head i mean the psychology and starts the body and i think that the examination with the cytokines which i'm showing you here uh, are which i listed as the most important like for instance when you have uh, high interleukin uh, 17f then then you have uh, some rheumatoid uh, or cardiovascular disease uh, when you have um, uh, interleukin-4, it's general uh, immunity uh, impairment and so on. So this is uh, crucial um, what will show you whether you go to fatigue syndrome um, or some other disease, you know. So uh, lots, of, lots of times we have noticed onset of leukemia with the, this type of examination. So then I would uh, suggest that uh, if, you if you have the capacity uh, to examine thoroughly the patient, then you should do all of these uh, all of these examination. Plus, there is the the, uh, the article from Translation of Medicine uh, that describes uh, in depth uh, importance of this uh, of this uh, examination. Now, ne neurophysiological changes adrenal. Of course, uh, we have noticed that before several times that uh, the, during uh, studies of uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, there has been done the complete genome sequencing and it, sh uh, it has shown that there is a um, prevalence of uh, adrenergic receptor A1. Uh, and then you have the product adrenal type plus, which is, uh, I would say, causative treatment. When you have examination that this receptor is hyperexpressed, uh, then uh, it changes the DNA, as the picture shows. It changes the DNA through transition of the information from the stress um, uh, hormones or the stress uh, cytokine, and it actually triggers the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis disorder. So as the first aid, when you have this examination, you uh, put the adrenal tight plus, which is uh, uh, stopping immediately the development of this uh, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Like when you have somebody in a high panic, uh, then uh, this would be instead of antidepressant, the first aid. Uh, what we have been doing, like you do the first day when it happens, you know, like you have a serious car accident. So you do two adrenal in the morning, two lunch, two dinner, along um, with uh, the damaged area. So if there is a brain damage or, or concussion or commotion, you do the brain. If there is a, a, a intestinal uh, you do uh, flat two or or uh, microflora. If you have orthopedic problem, you do muscle and joints and so on. But adrenal is the first not to develop the f further symptoms into the propagation of uh, uh, of disease. Now, uh, the. General problem of chronic fatigue syndrome once it's uh, developed is is uh, the chronic low grade inflammation. Um, there was a big study that said that most of the chronic disease is actually the inflammation, and uh, if there is any pandemia in the Western world, then it's inflammation. Uh, because when you examine thoroughly the uh, CD8. Uh, and CD4 uh, levels, you may say for sure that you have been uh, under chronic inflammation. Now, the important part is 
uh, that uh, the CD4 uh, act through the major histocompatibility complex class one receptor and uh, CD8 through uh, class two. So whichever you have higher, you know that the patient is in, uh, in the inflammation plus the trigger in that is so-called heat shock proteins. So you may do examination also, the labs do it uh, for the heat shock proteins. So if you have the chance to examine the levels of heat shock protein 53 and heat shock protein 70, then you have uh, a clear picture that the patient is uh, in onset of autoimmune disease and you may stop it with uh, the following protocol. Right, which is uh, like you have a stress, uh, stress diabetes 2. Yes, that's typical. Uh, or when you have somebody who has been treated with the cortisone high level, it's again, it's stress diabetes 2, um, uh, or the, the fibromyalgia, or uh, uh, rheumatoid pains, arthritis. So you combine immune tight plus, vessel tight plus, and muscle. These are the three initial initial protocol for the now it depends also on the severity so if you have a mild you do one of each two times per day if it's a person of a higher body weight with uh, more uh, developed uh, symptoms you do two uh, in the morning two in the evening of each and of course, in the acute condition, you do uh, three times two uh, of each. But it's quite demanding because then you have a six uh, six uh, capsules in the morning, six lunch and six dinner. So it's a question of clinical evaluation, what severity we are actually facing and uh, what other uh, remedies can help uh, to calm the patient. Of course, meaning uh, natural remedies. Now. Uh, yes, these are the post-transcription uh, regulation mechanism. This was just for your interest that uh, when the peptides uh, function through the membrane, then you have uh, actually new transcription of the messenger RNA and you really create a new protein. So uh, that's uh, what has been always discussed, that this is a typical anti-aging mechanism of the uh, of the uh, peptides because they are absolutely uh, focused on like the product the muscle for instance that it synthesizes new proteins so you actually achieve the anti-aging by uh, maintaining synthesis of proteins because one of the factors of uh, uh, protein of aging is decreased protein synthesis that's why you see the older people are shrinked comparing to the younger people. So it all depends on uh, the level of uh, uh, protein synthesis. Now, uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, this is a very important document that uh, already in 1993 in the United States has been issued a patent for treatment of chronic fatigue disease with peptides. So uh, this was uh, uh, at the early stage, we have, uh, well, this was injectable, of course, so it's a medication, but the concept was uh, similar as we are presenting now. So uh, you may be absolutely sure that this is a proper way because it has been in the United States studied already um, 27 years ago. And uh, so this is just for your interest that it's really a substantial approach to chronic fatigue syndrome through the peptides and it's one of the most uh, rewarding, also most complicated, you know, because the rewarding part is uh, by uh, so far uh, with the mo more with the uh, focus on the injections because uh, as you know, there is 1200 peptides in the injectable form. So the other sample which I was uh, mentioning, I want to mention that uh, Frontiers of Pharmacology in September 2016 uh, have confirmed 
publication that uh, placenta peptide can protect mitochondrial dysfunction through inhibiting oxidative stress and tumor necrosis factor alpha generation by maintaining mitochondrial dynamic network. So this is also a proof that uh, the uh, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome uh, and especially the oxidative stress, which we have been addressing before, is sustaining very well uh, in the uh, international experts or scientific community, uh, despite the community is uh, quite small. But you may look at this, you know, it's a very interesting article uh, with uh, quite uh, uh, important conclusion that it really, the peptide can stop the oxidative stress. So. Uh, that's what I'm telling you at the beginning. As the general information, this is the confirmation. Now, uh, the, going to the therapies. So, in general, we discussed, you know, lots of uh, lots of uh, protocols. So, uh, we have discussed the anxiety, mood disorders, addictions, uh, eating disorders. So, uh, we can go through. Uh, some of these protocols, which are, for instance, for the uh, anxiety. Now, <clears throat> anxiety is always related to nerves and brain. And the question is, uh, as we discussed it before, if there is an infection, neurological, like borreliosis or um, herpes, you may put the protection. But uh, these three for anxiety, would be the most appropriate because um, the heart uh, is the biggest emotional uh, organ in the world. Greg Braden, who was supposed to be uh, in April in Prague, but uh, he's lots of on the internet. You may go uh, to the site of his Heart Math Institute, and they consider that uh, uh, heart is the biggest emotional organ which uh, may explain why all the emotional literature is linked to the heart. So that's why our experience showed that when you have a nerves for the calming, the conductivity of the nerves, brain as an improving metabolism of the brain and, and cardio reinforcing the heart. So this is like essential for the uh, onset of anxiety or symptom of anxiety. Secondary option is that when you have the uh, these microbial uh, problems or you have some other uh, uh, combinations with uh, pathologies, you may always add uh, flatu or microflora. The question is uh, how much patient is able to sustain because uh, three is a, like a borderline if you have a, a two capsules of each two times a day, it's becoming uh, a little bit of uh, annoying for the patient. So the comfort is also important. Uh, so uh, we usually try three. So in this, uh, if there would be the question of, uh, of uh, uh, more uh, related combination with uh, pathology of intestinal, uh, then I should switch the, the nerves for the flatu or microflora. Now, uh, <clears throat> yes, here we mention again borreliosis. So there is very important the coenzyme Q10 uh, because uh, it's extremely important in adenosine triphosphate generation and uh, inhibition of uh, the inflammation. So it's also a very strong uh, antioxidant uh, which will help increase the function of uh, of the uh, peptides. So for the moment we have uh, uh, regarding the sleeping uh, pattern um, which we discussed before, uh, so we have to consider that uh, uh, direct use of melatonin, um, despite its very important accident and neuroprotective, uh, is uh, not so recommended because you already substitute hormone which 
pineal gland should produce. That's why uh, you have uh, epiphysis uh, for the sleeping disorder, adrenal to calm down, and parathyroid. So these these three, in the aspect of uh, sleeping disorders of any kind. And then you have to do, uh, the question is whether you can do uh, the sleeping laboratory because the examination, clinical examination of the patient is then extremely important for the uh, appropriate uh, pattern of the uh, uh, peptide prescription. You see, so uh, this is uh, the sleeping pattern. Then you have the adrenal to calm down because everybody is going in a symptom uh, sympathetic tonicus uh, mode because everyone is sleeping with uh, some work with some discussion with television and so on and people cannot sleep after that so it's very important to judge also uh, the epiphysis you know uh, is there the question uh, under any contraindications with these products can they be taken with other supplements and medications? Yes, but basically the advantage of peptides is that uh, they do not interfere so much with uh, the chemical medication, they only improve it. So uh, if you combine it with the chemical medication, you decrease the efficacy of uh, the peptide. But uh, we have never faced any major uh, conflict between uh, using simultaneously chemical and uh, peptides. So, uh, and of course, other supplements I'm saying, you know, so when you need some more, let's say vitamin B, high dose uh, in the cancer, for instance, or you need more coenzyme Q10, for instance, Q10, which I was mentioning before, is uh, approximately 1500 milligrams a day is therapeutic dose. What you can buy in the store is usually something about 100 to 200 maximum. So what you can buy is basically worthless. So uh, the, the question is for the, the sleeping, you know, you try uh, adrenal and epiphysis. If it doesn't work, you may add parathyroid or uh, com always combine the three or combine two. In general, so um, th this is what we are uh, we are using uh, with a fairly well. Now, for the borreliosis, which I was mentioning at the uh, at the beginning, uh, borreliosis is uh, uh, always you always start with protection because there are two types of uh, toxins. Number one are the uh, active borreliosis, which you can hardly find, but usually you receive the patient when the patient has been already treated with antibiotics. Now, the major problem of antibiotics is that they kill some of the borreliosis, borrelia, and the dead bodies disintegrated, uh, uh, the dead bodies of uh, Borrelia disintegrated uh, by the uh, chemical reaction with antibiotics create with the metabolic molecules of remaining parts of uh, uh, antibiotic cre create a very specific ligand. They simply bind together, you know, the toxin of remaining toxin of antibiotic and the remaining body or um, parts of uh, of uh, borrelia and they they bind together now they become a specific protein and the specific protein um, finds a receptor and if this specific protein finds a receptor uh, then it's incurable in the way that it, it gets you know it, it's curable only in a special custom made antagonist peptides which are done uh, under a uh, very specific condition. So always um, I try to warn the people if they have um, borreliosis or on the level of antibodies, don't take antibiotics because you never, antibiotics may, may be used only at the very early stage when it's still active, which in this case it is not. So uh, what we have to, uh, what we have to find is uh, the stage. But you always can use the protection for three weeks, uh, six capsules a day, and then 
stand with the brain and memory and nerves. Depends uh, what is more, whether it's central or it's peripheral. You know, whether it resembles more like a, a, a central nervous system impairment or peripheral like, like uh, multiple sclerosis, which is always uh, very frequently mis misdiagnosed borreliosis with multiple sclerosis. And uh, because of the symptoms. So when you have the other option is uh, after protection, you, you do the brain and vision and uh, vessel. So that's uh, what you can do on the, uh, according to the symptoms that you have uh, with, uh, with the patient. So from this point of view, I would uh, suggest that uh, uh, you may choose one of the, uh, these combinations, but always starting with the protection. Now, here you can see uh, whether uh, how many of the um, inhibitory neuropeptides regulate uh, immunity activation, antimicrobial, cutaneous, neurogenic inflammation, specific uh, immunity activation, and there are activating peptides and inhibitory neuropeptides. Now, the, that's very important, uh, which you give a kick, right? So if you have uh, like uh, uh, HPA axis activation, it goes all the way to neuropeptide epsilon, right? Which is in the intestine. So here you can see like um, uh, what it does or skin appendage growth or um, immunocyte infiltration. So all this, you see the links where they are uh, inhibitory or activating. And the for this purpose, you may use uh, one of these uh, combinations and there must be always the clinical evaluation. So uh, the problem is, what is the uh, uh, most important symptom that the patient is uh, like joint pain, for instance, right? So you start with uh, the detox, vessel, and muscle. If you have uh, um, if you have more of the neurological symptoms, you start with the nerves and go to the vessel and uh, uh, end up with the muscle. Uh, plus, um, depends on the cardiovascular condition. So uh, the diagram which I was showing before shows the um, uh, enormous combination of uh, uh, peptides regulation of our uh, metabolism, of our well-being, of our health. And that's why uh, for the moment it's uh, quite uh, complicated. Uh, but when you learn it on the basic principles which I was just presenting, it's very rewarding. I think I have never seen for the chronic fatigue syndrome nothing more efficient than peptides. So. That's uh, all for from me now, and uh, we have 10 minutes for any uh, questions. Uh, so what, what about if we have higher level of CD3, CD4, and CD8? Well, uh, then you have to go further to uh, interleukin. Uh, so th this could be, for instance, uh, showing towards uh, autoimmune disease of uh, bone marrow. Right. So, as a first aid, in this case, I would uh, I would give the the bone marrow and um, uh, microflora because uh, immunity is always regulated from uh, from uh, the intestine. But this, if you have high Ds, you must always do the interleukin uh, four, six, uh, seventeen. Right. To be sure, where which tissue you go to. Because this is the general uh, alertness of the of the uh, immune immune reaction, but you don't know where this immune reaction is going to be headed. Uh, normally, I would suggest that this would be some autoimmune disease and uh, possibly uh, leukemia, but it needs uh, a more clinical picture. But this would be my suggestion. So go for the bone marrow and uh, the intestine, which is flatu or microflora. Hmm? Okay, next. Uh, 
If chronic Lyme, well, this is a good question. Yeah, I mean, if it depends how long what, what, chronic. What what it means chronic? Um, I mean, the patient comes and said, I I I was just diagnosed with uh, high level of uh, uh, antibodies of the Lyme, and um, I am not aware of any uh, any symptoms that uh, I would have. So this is what I mean. Three weeks. Uh, of course, if you have um, a chronic condition, let's say one year or um, half a year after the uh, after the infection or onset of the um, increase of antibodies, uh, then uh, you have to use it. Uh, uh, three months, along with uh, uh, the nerves and the brain, because that's already, uh, by my opinion, uh, the damage of the uh, immunity regulation has been done by maybe by the mechanism which I was describing. All right. So regarding the the um, psychological approach, you know that uh, I was suggesting at the beginning, it's always uh, typical for the patients which are. Uh, I I always say that every disease starts in the head, you know. So uh, we explained it how, and we explained in the last seminar uh, what is the mechanism, but. Um, Nobody can treat with the peptides uh, without speaking with the patient, you know. So the the actual performance uh, is that patient understand what it does, what it uh, uh, how it regulates his body, and that's the actual uh, uh, combination of the uh, uh, medical performance with uh, the distribution of the medication or or the food must be called food supplement but uh, we have seen many times that you have group of uh, very well trained doctors and with the same protocols they achieve uh, to fix twice as much uh, patients than the group uh, which is uh, strongly pharmacological because they don't get too much of uh, of the importance how, how it works so I think uh, I'm trying to convey all these messages and my experience to you because that's the most important part which uh, you have to learn how to approach the patient and increase his belief in, in uh, health, his health. And of course, lots of patients are manipulating because, <laughs> you know, you can't believe how many patients with uh, cancer we had and uh, roughly 30% are doing everything not to be fixed. So uh, maybe you have observed it as well, but uh, the power of manipulation with disease is enormous. So uh, when you have to break the whole uh, system of the uh, social and uh, personal relationship with the disease, uh, that's way above any peptide could do you know because we had we had one patient and uh, she was uh, being served by the parents by the husband uh, she didn't have to do anything and uh, the minute that she started to be getting better she pulled back you know so then we had a thorough discussion and she said you know but what if i would have to go to work you know and i would have to start to uh, take care of my children and so on so uh in the chronic, chronic fatigue syndrome, this is very rewarding to do the thorough psychological anamnesis examination. All right, guys. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, uh, hope to see you in a couple of weeks again. Okay.